This program is a presentation of UCTV for educational and non-commercial use only. Identity. Is it culture, religion, language, the place we call home? People are constantly on the move, traveling and searching, seeking safety, respect, and dignity, or simply a better life. Location can alter perceptions of ourselves and the people around us. What role does geography play in our identity? Can it create an identity shift? Fleeing religious persecution, Iraqi Christians ended up far from home. But now they face a new struggle, the right to stay in their adopted country, Sweden. No, I هي الموصل يعني شيء يصير يعني ما أقدر كل شيء أسوي إذا يرجعوني بالقوة. Majda is one of 40,000 Iraqi asylum seekers living in Sweden, but she is facing deportation and even has a suitcase packed for when police finally show up to take her away. It's a day she's feared for weeks since Sweden denied her asylum claim. Sweden deeply opposed the war in Iraq. Yet the Scandinavian country has taken in more Iraqi refugees than any other country outside of the Middle East, including the United States. Since the start of the war in 2003, tens of thousands of refugees fled to Sweden in search of a peaceful haven. But it is starting to close its doors. This year, Sweden began forcefully deporting Iraqis back home. The, the resident was the Swedish right. They can give me it or not. but. The most important thing that I am living in peace, at least, I mean, so nobody can kill me here. Like Majda, Taif's asylum claim has been denied. He'll be deported back to Iraq unless he can convince a judge to let him stay. But for now, he is living in a world far different from the Middle East. And I am the goalkeeper of my team, and this is our stadium. Because we are playing football here. Iraqi Christians like Taif practice their religion openly here in churches such as St. Thomas. But they say if Sweden denies them asylum, they will be sent back to a near certain death in Iraq, where kidnappings and violent attacks can be a regular occurrence. If they saw this clause, they will cut my head immediately. Taif says Islamic militants in Baghdad kidnapped and held him captive at gunpoint for two weeks. His parents paid a $30,000 ransom for his release. Even if Sweden needs immigrants, it's impossible for us to take care of everyone. Swedish officials say they sympathize with the Iraqi plight, but they are simply overwhelmed by refugees. In some cases, refugees have even been found living in storerooms or cellars. It's necessary for us to say stop now. Uh, it's not a problem for Sweden to take care for about 20 or 30,000 uh, refugees. Um, but with a concentration today to some municipalities and some areas, it's not possible to take care of a refugee in a good situation. Lago is the mayor of Sudertelje, a small town that has become the epicenter of the refugee crisis in Sweden. The picturesque town of 80,000 residents has more Iraqi refugees than all of the United States and Canada combined. Thousands have moved into the high-rise apartments on the outskirts of town. In Sudertalia, I am happy before uh, I, I meet uh, many people who talk Arabic. It's very easy about me when I need any, something. This grocery store, in a part of town called Little Baghdad, is where shoppers can find Middle Eastern spices, and even hookahs. Sweden granted Nasir asylum a few years ago, before changing its policy. Here in Sweden. I'm very uh, 
it free when I talk about anything, about politics, about water, anything, without afraid from the police. So many Iraqis arrive at this town, sometimes 20 a week, that Sudertelia holds introduction meetings for the new arrivals. The meetings take place in a building just outside the train station. The newcomers learn about housing, schools, and their monthly allowance of about $1,000. But recently, Sudertelia began adding PowerPoint slides in English that suggest that the Iraqis move to a different town in Sweden. Meanwhile, the Swedish Migration Board tightened its policy, denying about 90% of asylum applications. The situation in Iraq is so stable today, so it isn't, uh, it's possible to send uh, asylum seekers back to Iraq. Half of Iraq's 800,000 Christians are believed to have fled their homes since the war began. Iraqi Prime Minister Nouri al-Malaki visited Sweden last year and encouraged refugees to go home, vowing them protection. They are all lying because there is no guarantee about the secure situation in Baghdad are now. I will get to back to Iraq at this evening and the next morning they will kidnap me again and they will release me, if they release me this time, and I will travel to Sweden the next morning and will ask for the asylum again. Indeed, many Iraqis say they would rather live in crowded housing projects in Sweden than face deportation to Iraq. Majda's husband and two young children are hiding in a Christian church in Iraq. She had hoped to bring them to Sweden, but instead found herself living with her mother in a small apartment, waiting. Ten days after this interview, Police took Majda to the Stockholm airport and deported her on a charter flight to Iraq. Taif plans to fight. I forget the Iraq flag, how it like. So he can stay in his adopted mm -hmm. country. He has a video that he plans to show the asylum judge as evidence of what would happen to him if he's sent back to Iraq. Well, the, the, the right of this world to catch this world and hit the, the heads of the Christians until this world is broken. His court date is in the summer of 2009. The, the Sydney's militia call the unbelievers because we believe in Jesus Christ. And they deny and cross Jesus Christ and told us if you want to stay in Iraq, you have to be Muslims or to get killed. I'm safe, I'm fine. Nothing can touch me. What do I feel? This body is so bad. I'm safe. I'm fine. I'm safe. Though they have lived in Ecuador for centuries, black descendants of African slaves continue to face discrimination. But they are shaping a new identity through the game of soccer, offering hope and pride for a new generation. De surgir, ser un jugador profesional con lo cual podría ayudar a mi familia. Carlos Maldonado is not the first from El Chota Valley to dream of making it big. Half of Ecuador's World Cup squad hails from this valley, where most people are Afro-Ecuadorian, an ethnic group that makes up a mere 5% of the country's population. Aquí en mi pueblo hay jugadores de primera: Edmundo Sura, Romel Sura, Giovanni Espinosa que se los ve, o sea, son un ejemplo a seguir, ¿no? A veces, o sea, se los ve y uno se imagina, yo 
qué tal si hubiese llegado a donde están ellos. The stars of Ecuador's most memorable football victories are Afro-Ecuadorians, and people are starting to take note of this often forgotten minority. We asked people in the capital city of Quito if their attitudes towards Afro-Ecuadorians are changing. Yo no creo porque no se ha cambiado nada aquí. ¿No? No. O sea, ¿cómo siguen las cosas? Igual, le demigran o le dicen este es ladrón por ser negro. A la persona de color le hacemos un lado poco lo que es, ¿no? El racismo. Han sido en los últimos años, hablando en el fútbol mismo, lo que nos, nos ha dado la, la alegría, ¿no? Ecuador had little football history until 2002, when they qualified for the World Cup for the first time. More recently, they were South American champions of Copa Libertadora, an annual competition among top clubs of South America. The success of Afro-descendant players is drawing attention to their place in the society. Hoy día, el fútbol, uno puede decir que en el Ecuador es cultura, es economía, es política, es geografía, es tecnología. Former soccer player and government official Fernando Carrión has written five books on the history of soccer in Ecuador. He says football is placing Afro-Ecuadorian regions on the map. El fútbol en estos últimos 10, 12 años modificó la geografía del país eh, porque hizo presentes ciertas zonas que no existían eh, en los mapas, en el imaginario de la gente, como es el caso eh, de las zonas del Chota. Les visibilizó a los afrodescendientes eh, y empezamos a descubrir que los pobres de los pobres son los afrodescendientes. Nosotros tenemos 11 pueblos en el Valle del Chota y ninguno de ellos es cantón o no es parroquia, no se han desarrollado. Entonces no tienen constitución política para ver por sus derechos. Decir que también existen, plantear sus ideas, hacer que las reglas se cumplan. Entonces ellos simplemente se han quedado ahí sin, dar a, sin avanzar. Ulises de la Cruz es un international soccer star who plays professionally in England. He has started his own foundation, Punta Cruz, and is spending his European club wages to rebuild his hometown. He has brought to the valley a medical center, clean water, roads, schools, and this coliseum. Inaugurado el hospital del día Ulises de la Cruz. But if you live in this community, O sea, no tienes ni siquiera uso de zapatos, uso, no puedes hacer ni tres comidas al día. No puedes tomar ni un agua potable, tienes que utilizar de un río. Tienes que hacer una niñez muy forzada en una agricultura, donde te exigen tus padres hacer. Entonces yo me pongo a pensar ahora que la vida te ha dado otra forma de pensar, ¿por qué tiene que ser así? ¿Por qué no hay protección para para los niños. Y aquí uno ve que efectivamente mucho más resultado está produciendo esta acción de sus propios futbolistas que la acción del Estado. Y aquí sí que hay una deuda muy grande. Y aparece también un signo de racismo. Los, los afrodescendientes solo sirven para el fútbol. Entonces el, el, Ministerio, el Ministerio de Deportes empieza a invertir no en energía eléctrica, no en empleo, no en salud, etc sino en canchas, en escuelas de formación, porque de aquí salen los futbolistas de élite que nos representan. Entonces lo que nos interesa es más la representación que la calidad de vida de la población. The chances of becoming one of these lucky players are slim, but that does not keep youth from this valley from dreaming of becoming the next football star. Entonces lo que se vende aquí es una ilusión de la movilidad social, cuando en realidad eso lo pueden cumplir 10 futbolistas al año, y no más de eso. Carlos is 22 years old. Time is running out. He hopes to be one of the four players chosen for the Mbabura Sporting Club, just under the professional tier. Ya prácticamente estoy tres semanas en el equipo esperando a ver que que el profe no me dé el visto bueno y poder quedarme en el equipo. Esto es una vitrina muy grande, la que me daría a conocer como como persona, como futbolista. Lo mismo y lo mismo, lo mismo y lo mismo. Entonces yo ya 
ya no quiero ya que viva en eso. Yo ya no quiero. Porque nada saca. Se está acabando su juventud. Está acabándose su juventud en vez de ir para adelante, mejor va para atrás. Y no tengo yo ningún apoyo. Estoy en este problema de la casa. Que ya se nos cae. Que, que me ayude para componerle la casa, porque en verdad ya se nos cae, ya la madera ya está podrida, porque mi marido no puede ni, no puede trabajar. Trabaja un poquito solamente así para la comida, pero para lo que es más importante, ya no hay. Entonces yo puse fe y pongo fe en mi hijo para que Dios le ayude y me ayude a mí también. La fe la llevo siempre. ¿No? Y si por ahí no se dan las cosas, ya será cuestión del destino, ¿no? Ecuador is competing to qualify for the 2010 World Cup in South Africa. With six critical games left to qualify, life in El Chota Valley hinges on the player's success. Success means progress for the people in this valley. Imagínate si no hubiese habido estos mundiales, ¿qué seríamos nosotros? Can an immigrant truly integrate if he keeps one foot firmly planted in his home country? A family of Senegalese immigrants in Spain is struggling to find this balance. I'm going to join you in the Hello. Hello. <laughs> Ten years ago, Maimunu's father, Alaji Ba, left the small Senegalese farming village where he was born. He traveled through Mali, Algeria, and Morocco before taking a ferry to Spain, where he settled in Catalonia. Senegal, mi altitron, comi ari. African migrants made international headlines in 2006 for attempting the thousand-mile journey from Senegal to Spain's Canary Islands in Cayucos, overloaded fishing boats. They were drawn by Spain's booming economy with its high demand for low-skilled labor. And, once they arrived, Spain's immigration policies were among the most welcoming in Europe. We don't call it illegal, we call it irregular. Irregular immigration uh, uh, falls uh, outside the rule of law, but at the same time it's a reality. The reality of the Spanish job market has been that the plentiful immigrant jobs in agriculture and construction were separate from jobs held or wanted by Spanish natives. <laughs> Alaji has held this same job clearing brush for over eight years, an unusually long time for most immigrant workers. Like many immigrants, though, Alaji's wages support an entire village back home. <laughs> Ni hebatato migulli, 
adi adani ga puru oko balejo ko tuba ko adi ko haju am don ko siwa ma o me gollu ga sati ga satani si mi wada mata sati o siwa lu mi mupa gita mi golla am ya bakali si seda in july 2008 alaji brought maimuna and his nephew yunisa from senegal through the spanish family reunification program Maimuna and Yunisa spend 12 hours a week in special welcoming classes for newly arrived immigrants. As their teacher, Arancha Prats, explains, they focus on learning Catalan, the regional language, though some must start with basic reading and writing skills. When they arrive, they always have difficulties to relate to others because they don't know the language, so there are many times. Però a mesura que va el temps, que va passant el temps, aquests nens són com qualsevol altre nen. Per mi, com me va dir Hanna, me va dir Zipu, Zipu Senegal, me va dir Ute, me he dit que me vendrà a cap, me vendrà a cap. Me vendrà a cap, però me fa matar, perquè me n'anà a cap. A per mi, ara que me fa matar, perquè me n'anà a cap. Jo no jo dic que no cap me fa matar. A per mi, me fa matar a cap, perquè jo no fa matar. Jo no fa matar, perquè jo no fa matar a cap. Sobretot en el cas de la Maimuna, perquè la Maimuna es troba a quart d'ESO, que és l'últim curs que ja pot realitzar aquí a l'escola. Són competències a nivell d'expressió verbal, de comprensió, i és molt difícil que elles ho puguin assolir. La majoria d'elles o es quedaran a casa i no seguiran ni estudiant ni treballant, llavors ens interessa que aprengui i... Si me dis que j'ai l'école sur le bac, je dis que j'ai des familles, je dis que j'ai la télé. Si j'ai des gens, j'ai des gens. Tu vas aller au Sénégal? Non, je vais aller au Sénégal. Si je vais au Sénégal, je vais aller au Sénégal. Je vais aller au Sénégal. Tu vas aller au Sénégal? Je vais aller au Sénégal, je vais aller au Sénégal. Je vais aller au Sénégal. Though, as I learned when I lived in her village as a Peace Corps volunteer, Maimuna, like all village kids, did a lot of work from a young age. The difference is that most village work, farming, cooking, is communal. <laughs> Senegal berani kan? Pulau Nusa juga sahun juga kugalita na wanata ayam tata ane derta ayam behel be ko bapa mami menyerama Senegal ajar tak ayah galai jifu ko fami gua tu. Dapat kita sakan ni. However, if Maimuna still lived in her village, she would by now, at age 16, most likely be married. The local and global economic crisis is having real effects in Spain. The first quarter of 2009 was the first time that unemployment rose among migrants, not because of increased migration, but because of a drop in available jobs. Migrants are also more visible than before. Since 1995, immigration has more than quadrupled. Now, over 10% of the population is foreign-born. It's been a dramatic change, but it's not the first time it happens. And always that process has been successful. And people who have arrived from other parts of the world to our country, at the end of that process has been um, an anacabatsin. An uh, assimilated or no? No, assimilated, uh, not like that. Um, they became... They became, became Catalans. That's what will happen with this immigration of today. They will be Catalans, of course, yes. Alagia is, by many measures, a success story. 
He holds a steady job, he owns his apartment, and he has brought family to Spain. He is also eligible to apply for citizenship, but he doesn't plan to stay. I think every migrant in the world, in every time in history, has always thought or has always think about return, and it's very natural. But uh, someday arrived that you look on your mirror, you look your hair hair, and you think, well, what what was happened? I was thinking in return and 40 years has passed, no? And now I have children and grandchildren, so I have more roots here than in my original country. Journey, <laughs> 